If you've ever been in a toxic relationship, you know it's not always easy to just pack up and leave. There are many variables that can keep a person trapped, so the best course of action here is to avoid them at all costs. Something else that isn't always so easy. If you find yourself in one toxic relationship after another, it's vital you begin to understand how and why you land yourself in these situations, so you can better avoid them in the future. In this video, we're exploring the hows and whys of toxic relationships so you know what to tackle in order to bring more peace into your life. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Number one, the fear of loneliness. It's completely understandable to be worried of ending up alone. It's human nature to want to belong, to have close loved ones. In fact, many of us are raised with the toxic idea that our self-validation must come from other people, which is false. But because of this conditioning, being alone can make you feel worthless, rejected, and insecure. And this is one reason why so many people stay in abusive relationships. But you know what? Being lonely and being alone are not the same thing, and being alone is not always bad. You need to detach yourself from your partner to become self-sufficient and feel your own potential. Some time with yourself will let your brain unwind, refocus, and recharge. Spending time alone will also open a door for someone who's actually good for you. Screw society's conditioning that being single is a bad thing. It makes so much more sense to hold out for the right partner for you instead of just settling for someone who brings you down in order to have a little bit of company. Number two, you always think things will change. You realize it's toxic, but you still fall for it every time. Why? Well, because you have hope, and as long as you have hope, you will always hold on. The memories of the good times with them are so close to our hearts that we keep hoping we'll get to relive them again, and that things will be different next time. But the sad reality is, about 99% of the time, you're just fooling yourself. When someone shows you their true colors, look, don't try to paint a different picture, okay? They won't change unless they want to change, and sadly, in most toxic relationships, that's just a pipe dream. Your heart needs some more time to accept what your mind already knows. Instead of focusing on your partner's potential, you need to pay more heed to their actions. Those matter a hell of a lot more. Number three, a fear of rejection. In the Stone Ages, our ancestors had to be accepted in a group for survival, and our brains haven't exactly been able to shake that instinct, so the amygdala still registers rejection as life-threatening. And fear of rejection is normal and understandable unless it starts impacting your life negatively by harming relationships. Every healthy relationship comes with a series of negotiations and compromises. The fear of abandonment can stop you from genuinely expressing your needs and standing up for yourself when you need to. It's okay to have concerns or doubts in your relationship, but there is a difference between temporary insecurity and rejection anxiety. Rejection anxiety means you struggle with a lack of confidence, guilt, or shame, and you spend a lot of time and energy worrying what others will think about you. If you feel uncomfortable speaking your mind or expressing your opinions, you'll be staying in an unhealthy relationship for far too long. Speak up for yourself, set boundaries, Aluxer, and learn to say no. Number four, feeling personally responsible for their toxicity. If you feel like this, well, chances are your partner is gaslighting you. Anytime a partner blames you for their actions, they're manipulating you to believe that it's your responsibility to keep them happy and content. That's toxic and way false, but it doesn't come from nowhere. For many people growing up, they would be punished if they did something upsetting to their parents. And as a result, this leaves kids believing that they are responsible for the happiness of others. And naturally, other people are responsible for the happiness level that they live with. And this toxic conditioning gets carried into adulthood. 
it's important you recognize that your emotions and actions are your responsibility and theirs are not, regardless of what they try to tell you. Recognize where you stand. Develop a self-loving and self-caring relationship with yourself. You are never responsible for someone else's actions. Number five, societal norms. Society shapes our belief system, which guides our choices. Some societies normalize, even glamorize, toxic behaviors. The stereotypes on TV where couples can't stand each other. That's what we see most often. And then there's this idea that if you were to walk away from a long-term partner, that you failed. Some societies and religions believe that marriage is forever and ending a long-term relationship or a marriage means that you've simply given up and that it's shameful. It isn't and it is not. True love is supposed to lift you up, not drag you down or cage you. Number six, no self-esteem. Research suggests that people with lower self-esteem stay longer in unhealthy relationships. Lower self-esteem makes you question your worth and hampers your ability to maintain healthy relationships. So boost your self-esteem, Aluxer. Surround yourself with people who see the good in you. Focus on your strengths. Don't try to be perfect, just a better version of yourself. And if you really struggle with this, on the Alux app, we've got a learning pack called Building Self-Confidence from the Ground Up that will help you to understand the roots of your self-confidence issues so you can overcome them once and for all. The 21-day lesson pack is included free with an app subscription, or it can be purchased separately for about the same cost as going to the movies. Go to alux.com slash app or search alux in the app store to get started. Number seven, there's a destruction of your self-image. But what will people say? Well, this thought right here has ruined so many lives. People find it hard to admit that they're in a toxic relationship because they fear how others will react, especially if it looks perfect from the outside. No one likes to be judged, blamed, or looked down upon, but at the end of the day, you can't let the thoughts and opinions of others dictate how you live your life, dictate the level of happiness you can achieve. Life's just too short for that shit. Number eight, you're dependent on your partner. You wanna walk out of this unhealthy relationship, but you can't. Why? While you share a life together, you're dependent on them. Children, marriage, and shared finances are often a reason for people to stay in toxic relationships. And this goes double if the dependent partner is also disabled in some way. Other factors may include a shared circle of friends and living situations. But remember, toxic people are drawn to codependent people like flies. And sometimes it's difficult to distinguish between love and emotional dependency. So many people believe that if you love someone, you need to put your partner's needs and desires above your own. But if this goes too far or if it's totally one-sided, it quickly becomes toxic. Develop a sense of self-appreciation and don't rely on outside love and acceptance. Only you can overcome your codependency issues. Nobody else can do it for you. Number nine, you're in denial of the abuse. If you're trying to make a toxic relationship work, you'll often focus on the good things about your partner. You'll be setting the bar too low that the bare minimum would come out sufficient. You might consider dysfunctional relationships as the norm if that's all you've ever witnessed throughout your life and in your childhood. If you're satisfied with an unsatisfactory relationship, it means you are fully in denial. Try to make an effort to surround yourself with healthy relationships to help you realize that what you're going through isn't normal. Number 10, investment of efforts and energy. Here's a piece of truth. The more you invest yourself in a relationship, the harder it becomes to let go of it. You might not want to come out of a bad relationship because of the invested time, energy, and resources. This failure of a relationship will feel more like a personal failure, an investment gone wrong. 
But remember that any good asset can become a bad investment if you pay too much for it. Find someone who's actually worth investing in. Someone willing to invest as much as you are. Number 11. You've been a caregiver since childhood. Some people have been highly empathetic ever since they were kids. They're often called caregiver types. And such people have a lot of sympathy for others, but often they don't care for themselves. Toxic people, especially narcissists, are attracted to caregivers because they have so much to give. And caregivers will give and give and give until there's nothing left. And a narcissist knows this and takes full advantage. And when you try to set boundaries with one, they'll gaslight you into believing that you're selfish in an effort to manipulate you into always doing what they want, leaving you entirely depleted and dependent. And on a similar note, number 12, manipulation. Toxic people thrive on control. To maintain their cycle of control, they have to manipulate you and your circumstances. And they are masters of their game. They play it so well that whenever things get tense between you two, you'll wonder, it's not them, it's me, right? You'll be called oversensitive or overreactive whenever you try to communicate. They will never own their feelings or apologize. You will always be proving yourself to them. They'll twist the narrative as per their own choice. Enough will never be enough. If you spot these traits in your partner, you have to fight falling in their influence. Fight for the things that you love and one of those things has got to be you, Aluxer. Number 13. Your alternatives suck. You may want to leave your partner, but you realize the alternatives are poor, or let's just say it, they're kinda crappy. But the fantasy of what could be is keeping you trapped. And don't get us wrong, okay? It could be better, just not with this person. Let go of the fantasy that things will be different with the same toxic person. As we've already said, being single is not the death sentence society likes to suggest. Spend time becoming the person that you really want to be, and the right partner will make themselves known in time. Number 14. Your use to tolerating pain. Imagine two ways of cooking a crab. One, putting the crab in a pot of hot boiling water. Or two, putting it in a pot of cold water and slowly heating it up to a boil. Both methods will give you the same outcome, a cooked crab that's been boiled to death. But which method would feel the most shocking to the crab? Well, obviously it's gonna be more shocked if it gets put into a boiling pot of water immediately. However, if you slowly raise the temperature, it's not that noticeable to the crab which started in cold water. The senses don't have a high alert reaction if the change is gradual unless it reaches a boiling point. The same goes for toxic relationships. The toxicity is typically slow and gradually increases over time, making victims accustomed to it. So it is vital to be paying attention to any red flags from the get-go. Don't just let them slide. Number 15, security and comfort. As humans, we need the company of others, but sometimes that comes with a heavy cost. Separation from the abuser might lead to different kinds of inconveniences. Some people prioritize security and comfort over peace of mind. Even though they're unhappy in their relationship, they'll stay to maintain a certain kind of lifestyle. They think it's better to stay where they are than to look for inner peace. But dependent relationships are detrimental through and through. The good news is you don't have to stay in one, and if you feel like you're trapped, please reach out to someone you trust or call into your local crisis helpline. Abuse thrives in silence, and keeping you silent is an abuser's top priority. No matter what they might tell you, there are lots of people who would be willing to help you, and lots of people who would be happy to love you. Staying isn't your only choice, you deserve better, Aluxer. Trust.
Thank you for watching this video, Aluxer. If you found it valuable, consider subscribing to our channel and joining our awesome community. And if you're still hungry for more, we handpicked this video for you to watch next or head over to our website for more amazing content. See you tomorrow.